everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to break down all of the new shots in the Little Mermaid trailer that just got released at the Oscars. We start off with Eric's ship during the storm and the sea is incredibly rough. There is then a close-up of the crew who are dealing with torrential rain and some people sadly get thrown overboard by waves. After this we see the wheel of the ship spinning wildly by itself and then the trailer cuts to Eric looking at the wheel knowing that he has to take control of the ship, which he does in the next shot. Eric yells abandoned ship and the ship crashes into a rock, similar to the iceberg in Titanic. Then to make matters worse, the ship sets on fire and starts completely falling apart. Next we see Eric on the balcony of this burning ship before he falls into the water. In this artistic shot, the camera is underwater looking up at a small lifeboat above the surface. Some sailors are swimming towards the vehicle so they can survive. However, Eric isn't so lucky as he is falling to the bottom of the ocean unconscious. But fortunately for Eric, Ariel is there to rescue him. She grabs him from behind and swims him up to the surface. She reaches the surface and starts bringing him to shore, avoiding the burning ship. While this is happening, we hear Hallie's gorgeous voice singing the R's from the end of Poor Unfortunate Souls. We then see Eric being put down on the beach by Ariel, and this sequence looks identical to the animated film. After this shot, there is a close-up of Eric with a cut on his forehead, who is just beginning to wake up. We then see Ariel from his point of view looking down at him. Again, this looks exactly like the animated film. Ariel then panics as she hears people coming. The trailer then shows us the men who are out searching for Eric. This man leading the group in red could be Grimsby, but I'm not 100% sure. This character is played by Aunt Malik, who looks different to the man in the trailer, but that could be just because of the added hair. The rest of the group wearing blue appear to be the Royal Guard. This scene was shot on the Italian coastline, and in the background you can see Eric's castle. As the guards reach the beach, Ariel has managed to get back into the water and dives under before she is spotted, and her tail looks especially beautiful here. After this, Ariel is shown looking back at Eric and I have no doubt that this is Hallie in the water and there is no CGI. The next new shot is of Ariel and Flounder swimming into Ariel's grotto and I especially love the sparkles on the rock. She has found a jug and a bowl and seems excited to add them to her collection. However, this excitement turns to shock when she sees her father in her secret place. King Trident has a great design, with a green tail similar to Ariel's, body armor, a gold crown, and of course his trident. You can also see the Prince Eric statue here, which looks very different from the original. It looks more like a renaissance sculpture with the missing arm. King Trident accuses her of breaking the rules by going to the above world, and Ariel defends herself saying that a man was drowning and she had to save him. Trident then goes nearer to her and says that this obsession with humans has to stop. In this close-up, you can see his body armor is turquoise and his gold crown has hints of green on it. Additionally, his beard and hair are gray instead of white. Then there is another shot of Eric on the ship and after this, we see Ariel looking at him. I presume this is from the scene where Ariel first sees Eric. Ariel then hears the sound of fireworks coming from the surface. She looks at them curiously and her hair looks really pretty here. She begins swimming to the surface while Flounder tells her don't. After this, there is an Ursula sequence, which starts in a dark area of the sea with a skeleton of some creature. Next, we see Ariel at the entrance to Ursula's lair. It is mostly black with a tiny hint of orange. There is also a pile of skeletons on the left, which make it look extra creepy. Additionally, in the corner, you can see an eel. After this, we see another angle of Ursula's home. There are some glowing orange creatures and orange fire and smoke coming out of some rocks. Here we get a better look at the two eels, as well as a clam with a black pearl coming out of it. If you look closely, you can see Ursula's tentacles coming out from the bottom half of the clam. Next, there is a close-up of these tentacles, and they have a blue glow-in-the-dark bottom, which looks incredible. The voiceover in this section involves Ursula telling Ariel that she can't live in that world unless she becomes a human. Ariel says, is that even possible? And Ursula replies, it's what I live for. Here we get a really good look at Ursula's makeup. She has on red lipstick, thick black false eyelashes, and glittery purple and green eyeshadow. She also has on large silver shell earrings. Ursula then grabs Ariel by her eight tentacles, and this was definitely one of my favorite shots in the trailer. 
after this, we see Ursula cast a spell to make Ariel human. Green and purple magic comes out of her cauldron and it kind of resembles Ursula's tentacles. You can see here that Ursula has on her seashell necklace and has long sleeves as seen on the Funko Pop. She also has on some black nail polish. Ariel spins in this magic potion like she is in a whirlpool and she looks pretty terrified. After this, we get our first look at Ariel's legs, as she is swimming quickly to the ocean's surface. Then we see the sun shining through the water, and Ariel does that iconic hair flip as she reaches the surface in her human form. The camera then closes up on Ariel's legs, and then pans up to her face. She isn't wearing any clothes, with her hair covering everything to keep this movie PG. Then we get our first look at Scuttle, who looks very different to the original. Her body is mostly white, with black feathers at the end of her wings. Her feet are black, her head is orange, and she has blue eyes. I also really like Aquafina's voice acting here, she is so funny. Also, props to Hallie for acting so well with nothing in front of her. Her expression here is adorable. After this, we see Sebastian talking in his CG form for the first time in some seaweed. This was the only bit of CG in the trailer that I thought was a little bit off. I think his mouth needed to move a bit more to keep it looking good. However, I quickly forgot about Sebastian as soon as I saw Ariel's cute expression with her lips pressed together. Next is my favourite part of the trailer, Ariel singing the Part of Your World reprise song peeking out from behind a rock. After this, there is a mermaid or merman swimming across the sea with fish following them. They have white hair and a green tail and they don't match the description of Ariel or her sisters. Potentially this could be a young King Triton or even Ursula before she became an octopus, as in some versions of the story she is the sister of King Triton. Another option is it could be Ariel's mother. Next is another one of my favourite shots, Ariel in her protected territory surrounded by some rainbow fish swimming upwards. Then Sebastian floats past her and I have to presume that this is the under the sea sequence. Then Ariel is seen singing part of your world. This part is during the line warm on the sand. The next new shot is of Ariel being covered by some red seaweed. It shakes and then reveals her. There is also some fish dancing around her with large fins. After this, Ariel is sitting down singing with Sebastian on a pink shell. Many multicolored fish surround her and it is so bright and colorful. Ariel then flicks some sand upwards and the trailer cuts to a wide shot of all of the sea creatures surrounding Ariel, seemingly cheering her on. The next shot is of Jonah as Prince Eric wearing a navy blue jacket and I think he is in his castle. After this, we see the exterior of the castle and it looks really good. It is a browny grey colour on some rocks at the edge of the ocean. There is a splash happening in the foreground and I presume it has something to do with Ariel. Next we see Ariel and Eric on their date in a horse-drawn carriage. Ariel looks fascinated by her surroundings and again she is wearing a pale blue dress and a pink headband. The next new shot features King Triton being revealed by a school of fish while blowing a horn. I think that this might be some kind of meeting for the royal family as it takes place in the throne room with all of the sisters. And if you look closely, you can see some of them beside King Triton. After that, we get a tiny sequence of Ariel swimming amongst some colourful coral before the best part of the trailer, Ariel singing the end of Part of Your World reprise on that iconic rock. The waves crash at the perfect time and it just looks so gorgeous. After this amazing moment, we come back to King Trident and Ariel's argument. King Trident says, he's a human, you're a mermaid, and Ariel replies, that doesn't make us enemies. And I love how this story seems to be leaning into the theme of overcoming discrimination. Next, we see more of Kiss the Girl with Ariel and Eric in a boat surrounded by greenery and lights. At the end of the boat there is a hat and a net, and I really hope that Eric doesn't try to catch any fish while he is with Ariel. Ariel caresses Eric's face and then he grabs her hand, while they stare lovingly into each other's eyes. After this, Eric is seen swinging on a rope during the shipwreck scene. This is followed by Ariel's father's trident glowing and falling into the sea, and I presume this is part of the final battle. After this, we see some fireworks which occurred above the ship while Eric is celebrating his birthday. Ariel is seen swimming towards the ship as these fireworks go off. The final shot is of Ariel swimming with a bunch of dolphins, and I am so jealous because I love dolphins. Anyway, that is all for today. Like this video if you liked it, and please subscribe. It would mean so much to me. Bye now and have a magical day.